I'm Scott Cannon from the Gas Drilling Awareness Coalition in Luzerne County, Pennsylvania. I had a day off, so I decided to take a 45-minute ride to Dimmick, Pennsylvania. It's ground zero for the hydraulic fracturing debate that is dividing our state in two. Dimmick is a strange mix of agricultural farmland and many industrial gas parks. One thing I noticed when I got out of my car is that I couldn't smell the farmlands, but I could smell the gas. Dimmick has been in the middle of a battle with Cabot oil and gas over methane contaminated well water, which Cabot denies causing. Earlier this week, the DEP made an announcement that Cabot is responsible for contaminating three or more wells just eight miles southeast of Dimmick because of faulty well casings. Upon arriving at Julie Sotner's place on Carter Road, I found a volunteer who brought his truck to fill up the Sotner's water buffalo. I'm coming from Afton, New York, Shenango County, and we're under the threat of fracking, of course. Um, to, depending on what happens now with the S. Geis and Governor Cuomo and the state legislature of New York. So um, we're, we're under that threat and uh, I would want someone to bring me water if we do get fracked and, and I don't have water to drink so I'm bringing water down here to these families who don't have water. Um, where, where do you get so the, the water? The water is coming from the Montrose source here. Um, I have brought water from my own well in Afton which is like the purest drinking water that I know. Um, but this water, unfortunately, is chlorinated and it's, it's city water, tap water. So, but at least it's good enough for washing clothes and showers and whatnot. Back in 2000, August of 2008, Cabot Oil and Gas started drilling for natural gas, 976 feet up on that hill behind and behind us. Uh, by September 11th. 2008 our water took a turn for the worst and it's been over three and a, three over three years now and we're we're still battling Cabot oil and gas um, you know they they say they didn't do it this is naturally occurring I beg to differ you know um, to make a long story short EPA stepped in last week offered to bring us water but what I understand was they didn't they were going to do it on an emergency, you know, a uh, few time basis until, you know, they they finished their uh, their research. And uh, once it got to the media, it kind of scared them. They didn't want to assume, you know, assume responsibility and say people to think that, you know, okay, they did find a problem here and uh, that that's not what they wanted. They just were going to bring it until they finished their data and uh, they they stopped it. They squashed it. So, we're back into scratching for water as you can you know, you witnessed this morning, standing out here filling our own buffaloes. So um, now uh, the EPA came and tested your water. Did they? They did not. The EPA did not, has not ever tested my water. They were basing their their uh, assumption on old DEP tests from 2010. Um, what what triggered them to come back in here to Dimmick was. September 1st of this year, Cabot Oil and Gas sampled our water um, by URS. They hired URS, they came in here, they sampled it. What happened was, um, we've been waiting for the test results for three months. Come to find out the end of November, we, you know, we had been asking where the test results were. Come to find out, Cabot Oil and Gas had these test result, results marked confidential. They didn't want anybody to see them. So our lawyers had went to the judge and asked for the results to be released. They were. Immediately they, and I know that day that I got them, I sent them right to EPA. They seen something in the results. Uh, maybe it could have been the chemicals. <laughs> and they said, whoa, wait a minute. Um, our decision a month prior to that um, is, is we no longer stand behind that. So they're, they're you know, they come back in and they're gonna, you know, reevaluate what's going on here and, and uh, maybe come up with a, you know, their own assumption, so. 
So no water has been tested uh, by the EPA or no. the DEP? E the EPA has not tested and the DEP has not tested in over a year. That was their choice, not ours. They said they're done with us people, they've done enough water tests, uh, they're not going to waste any more money on Demic. So a year went by and did they, they say, okay, Cabot doesn't have to supply you with the water because it's it's safe to drink is that the Cabot story? oil and gas had met the requirements of a 2010 consent order um, that was drawn up between Cabot and the DEP which we had nothing to do with and they met those requirements which were to put uh, double the tax value of our home in, in an escrow account and offer it to us along with a gas mitigator that was their deal. You take this deal, leave us alone. We won't test you, we won't bother you, you won't bother us. Everything, you keep your house. Oh, thank you. They're, they're allowing us to keep our house, this is what I keep hearing. Um, and we, we keep the dirty water too. So for, for this little amount, and it was a little amount, we have to pay taxes on it, and we have to pay lawyer fees out of it. Um, you take that and uh, you walk away. Uh, and and sign a paper and you know I know I know we've read over and over again no strings attached that's not true then why did the one family who did not the money they didn't take the money they they opted to try the system you know which we have the system it does not work try the system we want you guys to sign this paper they refused but they're still getting the system so you know we got to give it a try Cabot has been providing you water up until a few weeks ago what about the rest of the, the, the shed and the, the heating of this? Uh, who covers that expense? Oh, we have been and always did. Uh, we, we, uh, we've been covering the heating for, uh, I don't know, two and a half years now, as long as we've had the Buffalo. They, they bought the shed, they bought the pumps, but they're mine now. They're my property. They belong to me. So, so you have to pay for the electricity yeah. to heat this yes. in the winter so that it doesn't freeze. And have been, yes. Yes, so that it's been a it's been a win-win situation for them, and uh, you know a lose-lose situation for us. So you know we have you know you see us here. It is the middle of winter, and I'm out here playing with water. I should be in there baking cookies for my grandchildren. You know, not not looking for water for my me and my neighbors. It's ridiculous. You know, fed up, had enough. You know, you know what I say? They broke it. They need to fix it. You know, just just water that's what we're asking for that's all we're asking you know that that's a horrible thing to ask for i shouldn't i shouldn't have to ask for water you know i'm an american last i know i was born and raised here i'm a i'm a taxpayer i'm a pa resident i shouldn't have to ask for water it should you know people take that for granted don't take water or air for granted you know yeah they they belong to everybody but boy i'll tell you let somebody come in and destroy it and take it away from you and see how you feel about it you know What is that exactly that he's doing? He's uh, pulling his Jake brake as he's going by our houses here. I mean, my father drove truck all his life, and I know you don't use a Jake brake on, uh, you know, a back dirt road. You know, not unless you're going down a hill. So they're doing it on purpose. They want to make noise. Yeah, they want to make noise because of my signs. I mean, you see my, you see my billboard on my roof. You know, I mean, they know, and they're working for the township. On the ride home. I get the feeling that science and facts are catching up to the gas industry, and I certainly hope so, because scenarios like this one are happening everywhere there is gas drilling in Pennsylvania. Right now, there are over 3,000 high-volume, slick-water, hydraulically fracked wells in Pennsylvania. If there are so many problems with this amount of wells, imagine the nightmare of 100,000 wells and that is what the gas industry has planned for Pennsylvania. 